Hey guys, welcome to another V Plays, and we actually got the P80 Alpha. Now, the P80 Alpha is going to be middle of the road performance for all of the tier 8 altitude fighters, including damage output. But it feels very easy to fly, and I hope that that comes through in this gameplay. And please forgive me at the very beginning because I do call this a star shooter instead of a shooting star. Hey guys, VBED here with another V plays, and we are actually looking at my first battle in the P80 Star Shooter. Uh, the P80, I've always wanted it. It's a it's a beautiful airframe. It was America's like first jet fighter production aircraft, and it mounts 650 gals in the nose that actually do more damage than the. P-51H, it's pretty fast, it's fairly nimble, and it is a beautiful looking platform, and it has the option of having my bat on the nose, gotta love that. Might not be a bat wing, but it's definitely a bat on the front of this airframe, and we're gonna try and zip over and see what we can do about possibly capturing the command center, because as things go, the first thing we're gonna go after is going to be an offensive zone. Although I really want to get these guns on target. Don't get don't 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 get dissuaded. Don't get dissuaded. Keep it keep it keep it going. Keep it going. We're going for this target. We're gonna move. Alternating the boost on the throttle. Pretty good airspeed so far on this airframe. Oh, look at that roll. We've got a target. It's a heavy. Oh, those guns are chewing them up. If this aircraft was available at the time I could have gotten my XP-85, I would have gotten this over the XP-85. Oh, look at that damage output. Can we hold against this guy? Not quite. And we actually rubbed bellies on that one. But, will and the bet, we can get the nose over at a much lower speed. Stick on him, stick on him, and got him. Nice, we got the zone. We've got a player and a Spitfire over there. Let's get a little bit more altitude. Out of play maneuvers are a really strong tactic. A lot of people don't realize this, but the human brain just does not like vertical thinking so if you can get into some vertical thinking you can actually take quite a bit of an advantage of most people's thought processes so if you come down from on top of somebody or for up from below they just have a much higher potential to get a victory out of that engagement so we got here that's a player Good thing we just came off of reviewing the XP-85, so we know how to oh, <laughs> use these machine guns. There's the player and the Spitfire. Oh, he got on us. I didn't think he had his nose pointed at us, but I guess he did. Let's try and get back in there. Fortunately, we do have an opportunity here. What's that bomber they have? They've got a 288s. They're 288s, tier 7s. We should be able to compete against those if I go ahead and start making my way over to the mining plant to dissuade that bomber. Ooh, but there's a heavy on him right now. I'm not too worried about it. Let's head for the mid. What a great climb, 470 miles an hour. This aircraft looks kind of odd because from the side it looks like a rounded nose, but it's actually tapered to nearly a point. It's such a interesting setup, but the machine guns are actually stacked up in that kind of oblong nose. If I could find somebody at altitude, that would be advantageous, but we're just not seeing it right now. That speed's working against us right there. Protecting an ally. 
Still a long time to kill. Got him. Yeah, there is that Spitfire back there, but we're going to go ahead and use our speed to get away from him pretty quick, actually. I don't think he ever stood a chance. And we'll definitely be able to outclimb him, so let's go over here and see what we can do against these enemies. Altitude's our friend. There is a bomber up here, never mind, and this aircraft is going to struggle against us at altitude here. We've already lit him on fire. Perfect. Nice. Most dangerous threat is going to be the heavy posed to the bomber. Self-preservation is key. You die. You hurt the capture zone as well. Quite a bit, actually. Oh, yeah. Great. I think I'm in love. Another bomber. Let's see how we can do against a bomber. Oh. Not a fair comparison, we're going to have some help here. We better do it quick though, because it looks like we've got a heavy vectored in on our tail. Don't get overly committed. Where are you? Oh, you're not supposed to be up here. This is way outside your altitude block, but... Let's burn you out, Ezra. There we go. As the guns overheat, they actually get more inaccurate as well. Something to bear in mind as you're engaging these aircraft. You're going to be more problematic since you're going to be above me. Ooh, but so are you. Oh, solid win 10,000, 13 aircraft destroyed. I think that's a solid basis for comparison off of credit payout. And again, this is first time flying the aircraft. And you'll know it's the first time flying the aircraft because I made the mistake of not converting the crew XP again. Uh, oh well, and there's more experience available for conversion if needed for when we're trying to get that EF-131 later. But got to click that button, guys, anytime you get a new plane. Oh, we have a message. Crew, accelerate crew training, jeez, what a mistake. But 241,000 experience, and if we were running non-premium, 161. This is a fantastic platform. This is my first time flying it, and I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's a nasty little bird, and it was able to pump out quite a bit of damage, surprisingly. So, oh, hello. So yeah, this thing actually does really well for itself, and if we were to draw a quick comparison to the guns, I think I mentioned this, or maybe I didn't, I'd have to review the video, uh, that this actually has higher damage output and higher rate of fire. Uh, arguably less damage per bullet because lower rate of fire, but damage per second, right? Um, but, I don't know, it, it, the high rate of fire means you get more shells on target, which means that if you have a chance for fire, you're going to increase the likelihood of starting a fire with 72 damage per second multiplied against six guns. That's pretty good. And then you actually have a little bit of a bump in range, which you don't necessarily feel, but is definitely there. Now, let's go ahead and compare this again to the XF-85, which we just looked at the other day. And his machine guns, while they are able to pump out 80 damage a second, there's only going to be four of them. So pulling up a calculator on my phone real quick, because this is what nerds do. You take your 80 damage a second, you multiply that by four for a total of 320 damage per second on the goblin. When you compare that to the 72 damage times six guns for 432 off of the... P-51 
here and then comparing that again to your Mustang Mustang only gets 390 so the Mustang actually has more damage output than the XF85 does so I mean going back to our underpowered right but if you were looking at a premium aircraft that's a fighter that's a jet that's machine gun or an American machine gun fighter uh, I'm, I'm going to have to say that this is going to be your better bet now that it's actually available. For the longest time, this wasn't available, and the Goblin was the only thing that was. So right now, we're actually looking at the birthday gift for this year, while this was the birthday gift for last year. So uh, frankly, I am pleased with both airframes, but man, for first flight, this turned out really well. What a mean, mean aircraft. And its maneuverability is pretty good 10.4 it's not anything to really write home about right now uh, but there there's some definite potential in the future for getting this thing a little bit more maneuverable with what you can do for um, upgrading these modules once we get the specialist which i fully intend on doing on this airframe uh, again we're going to run into the same issues you did with the xp85 where you have these airframe block will open up but what are you going to put in there the nice thing though is that you actually get an engine consumable for specialist configuration so you can really gun this thing up to its higher air speeds because oof, look at that 321 miles per hour cruise with the current configuration with the boost capacity up to 519 and again a dive speed of 590 which i'm willing to bet this can get up to a lot easier due to the weight of the airframe but i'm not sure how the physics actually work out for this in game but man what a stellar piece of machinery I'm, I'm overall impressed right now but again one battle does not make a pattern hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this airframe real quick uh, i'm going to call it a review just to throw it in with the other american premium reviews since it is available per for purchase now and it kind of fleshed out almost i have almost all of the american premium aircraft with the exception of the xp75 which i have heard very mixed reviews on based on the fact that it's a machine gun heavy but Man, this, beautiful, loving it. Anyways, I digress. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.